ஓ ஒரு <laughs> So they would have all gone to Transpec in the Sudhaya. But anyway, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Just now you heard uh, the introduction to the topic. Yoga is a word which is very confusing. A couple of months back there was a an international conference on yoga and spirituality which i had inaugurated that was held at lonawala there i made it very clear that yoga and spirituality are not two different things that we have to give them connection in fact yoga bereft of spirituality loses all its meaning and to equate yoga with only sirshasana and some asanas will be insulting the word yoga yoga has come from the word yuch sanskrit word yuch and yuch that is the root that denotes that cannot the meaning is to unite and even if you take it from the latin word yoga comes from the word yok why okay and yok also means to join so yoga is joining it is a union of the individual self with the universal self it is a union between ordinary human being and god so yoga is what leads you to unite you with god yoga is what unites you with your real inner core inner self the very nature of the inner self according to vedanta is sat chit ananda infinite existence infinite bliss infinite knowledge that is our true nature but at present we do not feel it at present we feel sometimes happy sometimes miserable sometimes we feel good sometimes we feel bad sometimes we feel we are on the top of the world sometimes we feel knocked down by failures so there are ups and downs but our basic nature is infinite knowledge infinite bliss infinite happiness infinite knowledge so that true nature is not always in our conscious memory and whenever we forget it we feel miserable we feel more want we want to have more happiness by having better cars more amenities more facilities we are feeling always wanting something we are wanting something or the other why because there is what we want is infinite that is why it is said yo vai bhuma tasukam nalpe sukha masti no human being can be satisfied with limited things you ask any even a small child how many chocolates he wants atli badi or so many afterwards when you will say no nothing saying no i want more 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 there is nothing saying no more money i want more money i want more money so the limit is infinite sky is the limit for everything why because its very nature is like that that is why we want infinite joy because our very nature is like that so to get united to that individual our real self that is yoga 
अलाउ इफ योर रियल सेल्फ इफ रियल नेचर इज सच्चिदानंद then why are we feeling this misery sometimes that is because we have forgotten it from whence came this ignorance we do not when this ignorance started coming to us and why it came we do not know but it is ignorance is there that is true but then how do we know that our nature is sachidanand how do we know just because vedanta some scripture say we will believe it no is the there are certain facts which come under the purview of rationality and there are certain facts which transcend our rationality but they does not mean that we become irrational transcending rationality does those facts cannot be understood by our limited intelligence but when we transcend our limited intelligence then we can we can get those facts we can realize those facts but with our ordinary intellect also this much we can understand that if you take fish out of water the fish starts feeling restless because its very nature is to remain in water water is its very nature and when you remove fish from the water then fish becomes restless that is why we sometimes we say i am feeling like fish out of water that means i am feeling restless and we are all feeling restless we are all feeling restless why because we are fish out of water our real nature is sachidananda but we have not yet somehow other there is some that union has been obstructed and so we are not yet having that union and that is why we are feeling restless we are feeling fish out of water our real nature is sat chit ananda sat means infinite existence chit means infinite knowledge and ananda means infinite bliss now ask everybody anybody do you want happiness or you want suffering even if you ask a small child immediately the reply will be happiness and how much happiness 20 kg or 40 kg 40 kg 40 kg or 80 kg 80 kg then how much happiness by afterwards you say i don't want happiness no we want unlimited happiness so unlimited happiness is a true nature second we want knowledge how much knowledge we want infinite knowledge and all of us want to live how long anybody you ask what is your plan when do you want to die i don't want to die there will come a compulsory but i don't want to die even those who are committing suicide they don't want to die mind you if you ask them and you tell them hundreds of ways hundreds of times if you just try to convince them no 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 please don't die no no i want to commit suicide but why do you want to commit suicide no no because this this particular thing is not in my life okay that life that particular thing is given oh then i don't want to commit suicide it is not that they don't want to live it is because there is some sort of suffering that has come because of which the person wants to end this and he feels that the suffering will end the suffering will end by given the life so nobody wants to die nobody wants to be ignorant everybody wants knowledge and infinite knowledge everybody wants infinite life and everybody wants infinite happiness that is because it's our true nature and when we are not getting that infinite we are feeling restless but we feel that we are feeling restless because of the lack of motorcycle we are feeling restless of the because of the lack of car we are feeling restless because of lacking in our own bangalore once we have our own bangalore then we will be happy but when the bangalore is already done then again we feel unhappy because our colleague has constructed another bangalore which is better than me so he does not do it so the happiness lasts only for a few minutes so this is all temporary happiness but 
we do not know our restlessness is not due to lack of these materials our restlessness is due to because we are away from our true nature so the aim of life yoga means union with our true nature union with our true reality that is the ultimate aim of life most importantly many of us have not thought about it this is a paradox this is a paradox we have not thought about it that what is the purpose of life what is the meaning of life there is a zen story a horse was galloping at full speed and someone asked the person who was sitting on the horse where are we going he said ask the horse because i am not taking the horse horse is taking me i am not leading the life life is leading me i am being led by the life wherever all are going i am like going like a flock of sheep everybody is going after money power position i am also going after that but never we thought what is the ultimate aim of a human life ultimate aim of the purpose or what is the purpose of human life what is the meaning of life that is exactly now the modern science says if you really want happiness fulfillment and success you must develop not only iq but also eq and not only eq also sq so all the three are needed iq we know in physics question eq we know emotional intelligence when your goldman made a research in 1991 and said that eq is more important than iq and now the latest discovery of the modern science is sq so dana joha she says in her books uh, she is a professor at oxford university she says in her book sq spiritual intelligence the ultimate intelligence where she says neurologically physiologically biologically psychologically from every point of view there is a concluding evidence there is something called sq which is the basis of both i IQ and EQ. What is IQ? IQ will tell you how to play the game of life. What is EQ? EQ will tell you how to play the game of life under changed circumstances with changed strategies. And what is SQ? SQ will tell you whether to play the game of life at all or not. Well, that's your choice. What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? Why we are born? Where do we want to go after this? What is the ultimate aim of life? This will be told by SQ. and another discovery the modern science is iq is available with all the species including the computers eq is available only with a few species but sq is available only with the human species so our scripture said only human beings out of 84 lakhs of species only human beings can have spiritual knowledge modern science says no there are 125 lakhs of species well not much different you are becoming very close 84 lakhs and 125 lakhs that time there was no microscope no cloning and yet they said 84 lakhs now they are telling 125 lakhs of species according to modern science out of 125 lakhs of species only human species can have sq spiritual knowledge so both are coming close so there are the purpose of life is to develop sq do how to develop sq and some of the kanand in his book on raj yoga has given beautifully the whole gist of this whole gamut of yoga he says each soul is potentially divine the goal of human life is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal do this either by work worship psychic control or knowledge philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free this is the whole of religion dogmas rituals worship temples mosques churches are but secondary details so the aim of life is to manifest the divinity which is already there how to manifest it by controlling nature external and internal how this can be done by combination of four yogas raj yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga and karma yoga the raj yoga is patanjali's ashtang yoga eight limbs of yoga ashtang yoga yam niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi yam is five satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha ahimsa and niyam is five 
शोच संतोष तप स्वाध्याय ईश्वर प्रणिधान सो यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारणा ध्यान एंड समाधि ज्ञान योगा ज्ञान योगा श्रवण मरण विधि फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नोइंग अबाउट द रियलिटी तत्व मसी हम ब्रह्मास्मी देर आर द महावाक्य और वॉट इज द रियलिटी देन दिस इज बीन टोल्ड देन वी हैव टू मेडिटेट ऑन इट वी हैव टू कॉजिटेट ओवर इट इट्स मनन इज श्रवण मनन and then we need to ascend deeply meditate on it that is to find out the inner meaning of that particular sentence or particular fact that basically our true nature is chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham this is gyan yoga so that is gyan yoga reading the good books the books which will give us the meaning of life and then reflecting over it meditate and meditate that is gyan yoga The third is bhakti yoga, religion of love. That is taking the name of the Lord, chanting some mantras, worshiping. All these are part of religion of love, bhakti yoga. And fourth is karma yoga. That is union with God by means of by the path of only action, by the path of karma. Now, just as you just heard, every one of us has to do some work. All of us have to do some work. We have to earn money. We have to go to the office. We have to the housewives have to go to the kitchen. Students have to go for study. Each and every one of us has to do some work. Even for our own basic survival, we have to do some work. Even those who are retired also have to do some work. Gossiping is the biggest work that they are doing, but they are doing. That is also work. Sleeping is also work. So, doing nothing is most difficult thing. Something or the other we want to do and we will be doing. So, karma, all of us are engaged in some time of. It may be productive work or unproductive work. There is a different thing. But each and every one of us is doing some work. so this karma yoga is union with god union with that perfection achieving that perfection through the path of action now the doubt arises we can achieve perfection we can realize god by sirsasana by yogasana by meditation by shavan mani vyasana we can think of it but and of course we may we may also get god we may also realize god by going to the temple church mosque worship prayer we can understand but how this is connected we are going to the office and we are doing this chemical reaction and this all say product producing chemicals and going to the offices and how this type of work can be convert can convert can be convert to worship we are not able to understand it that is why in the bhagavad gita the scene opens the scene that is being given there we think that our work in is we are so much busy in life and in our factory so much of noise and noise is going on m is this noise m is this hustle and bustle m is this so much of activity can we realize god so the scene that has been given is a battlefield of course there cannot be more noise than the battlefield so the most noisy place has been depicted arjuna and shri krishna they are sitting they are there in the battlefield and there is lakhs and lakhs millions of soldiers are there in front of the, each other for fighting battlefield and so much of noise is there tumul tumul dhoni tumul dhoni is going on highest amount of sound this sound pollution is going on we think that there is so much of sound pollution how can we remain calm and quiet and do practice karma yoga but highest amount of tumul dhoni is going on in the battlefield in the battlefield arjuna also says i would rather become a hermit but i don't want to fight 
then Sri Krishna says, no. Sadharme vidhanam shreya paradharmo vayava. Your sadharma is to fight. Fight for justice. This is a rightful war. This is a holy war. And so, you should not shirk your duty. Just by following your own duty, whatever duty comes to you. If you are a manager, that is your sadharma. If you are an officer, that is your sadharma. If you are a sweeper, that is your sadharma. Every one of us has got certain duty to perform. That is our sadharma. This sadharma, we have to follow. By following our own sadharma, we will realize God. We don't have to do anything extra. That's the wonderful thing. That is Karma Yoga. Without doing anything extra, you get infinite knowledge, infinite bliss, infinite happiness, infinite life. That's the wonderful thing. So that is why in Karma, this book, in Bhagavad Gita, the scene that is depicted is the battlefield. Even in battlefield, if we can realize God, then why can't you realize God? in the office, in the factory and God is not there in the sky. Sarvam Kalu Idam Brahma. These are the two fundamental principles of Vedanta we must realize. Two basic principles of Vedanta. Number one, divinity of the soul. What is that? Each and every human being has got a divine self within himself or herself. Number one. Esha sarveshu bhuteshu guro atma na prakashate drishyate tugraya buddhya shukshmaya shukshmadarshivi. Inside every human being there is a self, atman, all powerful atman of the nature of Satchit Ananda. It is inside each and every human being. Is present in each and every residing in every human being. Esha Sarvesh Bhuteshu, irrespective of caste, creed, color, religion, nationality. Esha Sarvesh Bhuteshu, Guru Atma. Atman is there, na prakashate, but it is not visible. If it is not visible, then what is the proof that it is there? If it is not visible, how do we say that it is there? Drishyate. Some people have seen it. That is the documentary evidence. Who has seen it? Drishyate Pagraya Buddhya. Shukshmaya. Shukshmadasri. Those who have got extraordinary intellect, not this intelligence, not IQ, not even EQ, but SQ. Those who have got very fine intellect, special intellect, they have realized this God. That is the proof of it. Esha Sarvesh Bhuteshu Guru Atmana Prakashate Vrishtate Tagraya Buddhya Shukshmaya Shukshma Darshini That is the purpose of life. The self is there inside every human being. We have to manifest it. We have forgotten about it. And the proof is some have seen it. What is the proof that there is universe, that individual self is there? What is the proof? Some have seen it. Narendra Dutt was a student in college in Calcutta. Scottish Church College. He was studying. At that time this doubt came to him. They are telling there is God. But what is the documentary evidence? I want evidence. Without evidence I will not believe. After all he was a son of a lawyer, you know. <laughs> Everything he wants to establish by arguments. So he used to argue. Anybody saying yes God is there. What is the proof? Have you seen? Have you seen God? Immediately he will cut the arguments. This, no, I won't believe. I want evidence. What is the documentary evidence? God is there. So, but he was in pursuit of truth. He wanted to know the truth. After studying Kant, Hegel, Spencer, John Stuart Mill, all those Western philosophers, he became agnostic in approach. He lost all his faith in God. But he wanted to know the truth. So, any saint coming to Calcutta, as soon as he heard that some saint, he will go there and ask, I have heard that you are talking too much of God, I want to ask you one question. Have you, have you seen God? Nobody could give reply. Once he went to Mahashi Devanath Tagore's house. Mahashi Devanath Tagore was father of Ravinath Tagore, the famous poet. He used to stay in a cabin in a 
boat and he used to meditate. So one day he went to that cab- cabin in a boat, Swami Vivekananda. This Narendra that who later on became Swami Vivekananda. He went there and said, Mahashi, I heard that you are meditating on God too much. I want to ask you one question. Yes, my brother. I want to ask you, have you seen God? For some time, Mahashi Devanath looked at him and said, My dear boy, your eyes are beautiful, those of a yogi. Narendra became too much disappointed. I am asking, have you seen God? He says, your eyes are beautiful. I don't want my appreciation. I want my answer. Nobody is able to, able to give answer. He became very much dissatisfied. One day he had gone to the college and then on that day the professor who was used to teach English literature was absent. So the principal professor William Hesty himself came to take the class of English literature. He was teaching then the poem. The name of the poem was The Excursion by Wordsworth. There the description comes how the poet goes into a trance, into a super conscious state by seeing the natural beauty. Then the asked, sir, is it possible that a human being can be transported into a realm of a super conscious reality, losing all the ordinary consciousness, going to super conscious state and samadhi state, is it possible? Then Professor William Hester said, yes, this is possible. I know one person who experiences this super conscious state, samadhi state, very frequently. If you want, you can also see him, because that person stays in Calcutta only. There is the temple of Dakshineshwar of Mother Kali, where Sri Ramakrishna Parama stays. He enters into the samadhi state very often. Then Narendra said, okay, let me also meet this saint and let me test him. So he immediately went there. When he went there, Sri Ramakrishna was in his room talking to the devotees. So he sat down at one place for some time. After some time he said, now enough of your talk about God, now answer my question. Have you seen God? You are talking too much of God. Have you seen God? And for the first time he received the satisfactory reply. Yes, my dear boy, I have seen God. Not only that he said, I am seeing him more intensely than I am seeing you. Not only that he said, and if you want, you also can see him. But you have to undergo spiritual practices. That is the science of religion. H2 plus O2 is equal to H2. We don't believe. Hydrogen is against oxygen is against. How can it be water? It's not a question of belief. Come to the laboratory, have a electric hydrolytic process, and when you don't get water, then you say, I don't believe in H2 plus O2 is equal to H2. It's a question of not belief. It's a question of experimentation. So Sri Ramakrishna says, I have experimented. I have realized God. You also can experiment, but you have to come to the laboratory. Laboratory of spiritual practices. And there is not accept the challenge. Yes. I will come to the laboratory. And he underwent all the spiritual practices. And he also realized God. That is why on the basis of the experience that he had, he could declare in the Chicago Parliament religions on 9-11, not that 9-11 World Tower, this is another 9-11. 9-11, 1893. And you know that 9-11 came because we did not listen to the Warning given by Swami Vivekananda on 9-11-1893. In 1893, he told the Chicago Palam religious that if you do not remove this dogmatism and sectarianism and bigotry, and if you do not accept all religions as equally true, as in India we have been following, if you Americans, if you do not follow, you will have to pay the price. And they had to pay the price for their dogmatism, for their sectarianism, for their persecutions in the name of religion. That is what Swami had warned. But on 9-11, he told them about the basic philosophy of India and say, Shulvandu Vishve Amritasya Putra Ahe Dhamma Nitivya Nitastu Veda Ametam Purusham Mahantam Adit Varnam Tamasa Parastat Tameva Vidhitra Timitimeti Nanya Pantha Vidhitayana I have found the ancient one who is beyond all visits. By knowing him alone, you shall be also get away from all types of misery. This he could say, the sentence from the Shweta Shweta Rupishad, because he had realized God himself. Yes, I have realized God. So Swami Vivekananda, he himself also realized God. As a student, 
he had practiced all the spiritual practices he had undergone all the spiritual practices and then he came face to face with reality and he said yes even in the modern times it is possible to realize what that is the proof document evidence of that there is some inner reality which is beyond time space and position and but we will have to transcend our this ordinary intelligence in order to be come face to face with that reality that is why lincoln barnett in his book einstein and the universe says man has a unique capacity of transcending himself and perceiving himself in the act of perception man has a unique capacity of transcending himself and perceiving himself in the act of perception and quoting neil bohr he says neil bohr says we are spectators and actors in this great drama of life simultaneously we are actors and spectators in this great drama of life simultaneously only human beings not animals no other species can become actor and spectator simultaneously they can act but they cannot become spectator we are actors at the same time we can be a witness i know i am speaking and at the same time i know i am speaking what is the difference between man and animal teller de charde raised this question in his book the phenomena of man what is the difference between man and animal and somebody said intelligence teller de charde says not necessarily so then he gave the example there is a cat you put some milk in the kitchen you find out more in the morning next day morning when you get up you find out the cat has stolen the milk from the kitchen so what do you do you hide the milk not in the kitchen in some other room and next day morning you find cat has taken milk from there also who is more intelligent so cat is also intelligent then what is the difference the difference is this beautiful he says while a man knows what he knows and animal does not know what it knows man knows what he knows and man knows what he should know cat knows how to steal the milk but cat does not know that stealing the milk is good or bad <laughs> and whether the knowledge of stealing the milk is good or bad this power of discrimination is only with the human beings with no other species so that is why he says why the man knows what he does not what he what he knows and anyone does not know what it knows so this is a peculiar unique capacity of every unique individual to transcend our own reality go beyond time space and position and come face to face with the reality and get infinite knowledge infinite happiness and infinite bliss that is the ultimate purpose of every human being if you have taken a human form at present most of the human beings Absolutely, they are nothing but animals with two legs. That's all. They are not making use of the peculiar faculty called power of discrimination, because there is no difference. Aha, nidra, bhaya, maithun, nicha, samana, metat, pushubhi, narana, dharmo hi desha, madipo, vishesha, dharma na hina, pushubhi, samana. Four things are common between man and animal. Aha, animals also. eat we also eat aha only they will take they will not have so so, so much a good food. plates to eat that's all but they are also eating we are also eating aha nidra they also sleep we also sleep bhai they also are afraid we are also afraid and may to nature they also produce we also procreate so these are the four things common then what is the difference this power of discrimination they do not know the purpose for which they are born there is a special mission but most of the people and are living like animals eating drinking sleeping and then die now least bothering it to know what is the purpose sacred mission for which we have come to this earth what work we have to accomplish before we die this knowing the purpose of life unless until we start to think about it we have not yet entered the human zone we are all animals with two legs that's all 
So, this development of SQ is a must. We must transcend our limitation. We must work face to face and get infinite knowledge, infinite peace, infinite existence. That is the purpose of life. How it can be done? By four yogas. Combination of four yogas. Now, most important yoga is karma yoga for most of us. Why? Because karma we have to do. We cannot escape it. For our livelihood we have to do. Our very life demands it that we should try to do some nimit, nimit, nitya work, nimitya, nimitya work. Nitya, nimitya karma we have to do. Nitya work means we have to get up, we have to sleep, we have to get up, we have to bath, we have to clean our teeth, we have to do certain work, we have to eat. So these are certain activities which we will have to do, without which we cannot survive. Nitya work. Then, nimitya. So there are certain works which we have to which we have to perform because of the very pur- very purpose for which we are living. So these two types of activities we will have to do, whether we like it or not. So now since we are all working, Swami Vivekananda says, why not convert work into worship? Or we are already in work. At present that work is giving us. If we work in the office, we get some money as salary, that's all. But that's all. But we can get extra. What is extra? God. We can get infinite knowledge, infinite happiness, infinite bliss. By doing the same work, you don't have to do work extra, you know. You don't have to do even one minute extra. Whatever we are doing, same work we have to do, only we have to change the attitude of mind. At present we are working for money. Now we have to work for the Lord. That's all. Change the attitude of mind. We are not working for not for X, Y, Z. We are working because God has put us in this particular history and so we are working for the Lord. That is the karma yoga from the point of view of a devotee. This is one way of converting work into worship. That is by prayer. O oh Lord, whatever I am doing is for you and whatever fruits I am getting is also dedicated to you. This prayer, morning and evening, will make convert work into worship. Trying to bring the spirit of worship. Oh Lord, I am not doing for me. It is I am doing for you. So, work is also dedicated to you, fruits also dedicated to you. Karmani vadika raste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalehetur hu mate sangosta karmani. Arjuna, Sri Krishna says, Arjuna, do your work. You are the right to the work only, not to the fruits thereof. I will give the fruit. And mind you, I will not do any injustice. If you do good work, I will give you good bad, good result. If you do bad work, I will do bad result. The law of karma is supreme in the mental world, just as law of gravity is supreme in the physical world. So don't worry about result. You do your work, don't bother about me. I am going to do my work perfectly well. You do your work perfectly well. But don't try to encroach upon my work. Don't interfere, interfere with my work. I know my how to do, give the result. Karmani vadikarasti ma pale shukadachana ma karma pale durgu. You should not, your mind attention should not be on the karma, on karma pal. You try to concentrate on work. The fruit will come automatically. Ma karma pale durgu. Ma te sangosta a karmani. You should not be attached to result of the actions. At the same time, you should not be attached to non-action also. Sometimes we say, if you are not going to get result, okay, then I will not work at all. Work you should do. Don't get attached to result. Some people, they say, they don't understand. They say, what, they, what does it mean? If I work and if I don't get salary, why should I work? Sri Krishna doesn't say, you work, don't bother about salary. Salary will come automatically. He is not selling that you should do work without salary. No. Not only if you do per- work perfectly well, not only you will get the present salary, you will get some increment also. And some award also. And some reward also. And some appreciation also. Why? Because yoga karma is a kaushala. Buddhi yukta jahati ha ube sukrut dushkute tasmat yoga yajjasva yoga karma is a kaushala. 
What is yoga? That's it in action. Perfection in work leads to perfection itself. Perfection in work will lead you to ultimate perfection, that is God realization. How? By perfection in your work. What is meant by perfection work? Efficiency in action, zero defect. Now we are talking about TQM, and total quality management and all that. Sri Krishna talked about it 5000 years back. Zero defect. Perfectly you have to do work. Yoga, Karmasu, Kaushalam, zero defect. Perfection. If you try to do work perfectly, it will lead you to perfection. But along with perfect work, there is one more thing needed. This yoga has to be also understood by another word that is samattam yoga ucchate. This will become yoga only if there is samattva buddhi. Samattva buddhi means not getting affected by good or bad result. At present, we become so much affected. If we get success, we become very happy. If we get failure, we become completely broken. Immediately we get completely broken. No. There should be samattva buddhi. I have tried my best. I have done lots of work. Finish. What will come? Result will come today or tomorrow. Doesn't matter. It will come. So this samattva buddhi, the spirit of detachment is a must. Spirit of detachment. This will make zero defect. So efficiency in action, zero defect, coupled with non-attachment or the spirit of attachment will make convert work into kar- karma into karma yoga. We will convert work into worship. This is only what we have to do. Have a paradigm shift of our thinking. I am not working for XYZ. I am working for the Lord. And this work what I am doing is a very great act, the great beauty that has been enjoyed upon me. So I will try to do as much perfectly as possible. Why? Because it is lost work. When we want to give a flower to the Lord, what type of flower we give? Unsmelled flower, fresh flower, best possible flower. So, when we are trying to dedicate work to the Lord, we should try to dedicate best possible work, zero defect work, not slip short work, not inefficient work. Let us try to do the work in the best possible manner and then offer it to the Lord. That will convert work into worship. This is one idea from the devotee's point of view. With prayer, we can convert work into worship. Second thing is from Vedantic point of view. If I don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. There is second thing. What is that? There are two basic fundamental principles of Vedanta. I said one is the divinity of the soul. Each soul is potentially divine. There is divinity present in every human being. And second principle of Vedanta is solidarity of the whole universe. What is that? The whole universe is permeated by one universal consciousness. Now the modern quantum mechanics also has proved it. Bell's theorem says all the particles of the whole universe are integrated at a different level. And David Bohm experimentally verified it. That yes, all the particles of the whole universe are integrated at a different level. That is why Schrodinger says consciousness is the singular of which the plural is unknown. Consciousness is singular of which the plural is unknown. It's all one consciousness. Sarvam Kalu Idam Brahma. Sarvata Pani Padam Tat. Sarvata Kshishiro Mukam. Sarvata Suti Malloke. Sarvam Avritya Sishuti. Isha Vasamidam Sarvam Yatincha Jagat Yam Jagat. Tena Taktena Bhunjita. Ma Agrida Kasi Siddhanam. The whole universe is permitted by one universal consciousness. What results? What is the derivation? What does it mean? What is its meaning? The whole universe, since it is compared as the same universal consciousness, I and you are not different. If I if I cheat you, tomorrow I will be cheated. For sure. Why? Because I have cheated you, I have cheated myself. You and I are not different. Isha, Vastyam, Pina, Sarva, Yatkincha, Jagatyam, Jagat, Pena, Tyaktena, Bunjita. That is why, because the whole universe is permitted the same consciousness, it is the one Lord present in every human being. What you should do? Enjoy the world. How? By renouncing. How can I enjoy by renouncing? By giving up. You don't have to give up the latest model car. You don't have to give up your house. You don't have to give up your food. 
then what you have to give up? Your attachment. Give up selfishness. Enjoy the whole life. Let others also enjoy, you also enjoy. But don't be selfish. If you become selfish, what you are trying to do, trying to do harm to others, the same harm will come back to you. Isha Vastra Midam Saram Yatkincha Jagat Kyam Jagat Tena Tena Gunjita Ma Vrida Kasya Siddhana Sister Nebirita You know, all the lectures, conversations, poems, converse, all this written by Swami Vivekananda have been collected into the and made into book form. The complete works of Swami Vivekananda. Eight volumes, and now the ninth volume always come. And when they came out, Sister Nebirita wrote an introduction to it. Sister Nebirita, original, her original name was Miss Margaret Noble. She was a teacher in UK, in England, and Swami Vivekananda wanted to do some work for the women of India and for education of women, education of in, women of India. So that is why. She, he requested her to come and start a school and then she dedicated her whole life for educating Indian women and for freedom movement also she did a lot of work. That's why Nivid, Ravindranath Tagore gave her the name Lokmata Nivedita and Swami Vikan gave her the name Nivedita, the dedicated one. So Sister Nivedita gives an introduction. And so the question is raised, does Hinduism say that one is real and many unreal and does Buddhism say that many real and one unreal? Swami Ka said yes. Brahma Satya, Jagat Mithya, one is real, Jagat is Mithya according to Vedanta. Buddhism says no, there is nothing called God or Buddha or Brahma or nothing like this, it is all your imagination. One is unreal, many is real, they say reverse. Is it that Hinduism says that one is real and many unreal and Buddhism says many real and one unreal? Swami Khan said yes. And then he said, and I and Sri Ramakrishna have come to add that one and many are the same reality perceived at different angles with different points of view. They are the same. Same reality. Now, if they are the same reality, then what follows? If they are the same reality, then to work is to worship, to labor is to pray, to renounce is to conquer, because the same reality. Then Sister Nirita writes, this is the realization which makes Vivekananda a great preacher of karma, not as diversing, not as diverse from Jnana and Bhakti, but as expressing Jnana and Bhakti. To him the workshop, the farmyard, the laboratory are as true and fish sins for meeting God with men as the door of a temple or the cell of a monk. This is the realization which makes Vivekananda the great preacher of karma, not as diverse from Jnana and Bhakti, but as expressing Jnana and Bhakti to him the workshop, the farmyard, the laboratory are as true feet and sins for meeting God with men as the door of a temple or the cell of a monk. So, this is the great karma yoga, Swami can says, each and every, everywhere, all around is the same reality that is trying to express itself. So, whenever you are working, try to see, I am worshipping the Lord in the human beings. That you cannot work into worship. Because everywhere is the same Lord. Each and every work becomes sacred. No difference henceforth between sacred and secular. Nebhidita writes, no difference henceforth between sacred and secular. Every activity is, is sacred, nothing secular. What we are differentiating. You say, what did he say? Oh, what are you doing? A uh, whole day I am doing secular work. That is, going to the factory and going to the office and going to do this work. Only morning five minutes, sacred work, worshipping the Lord. And evening five minutes, sacred work. Rest all is secular work. Some of you says, no difference and suppose between sacred and secular. Whole thing is sacred. Morning, when I am sitting in the meditation hall, when I am praying, that is sacred. And rest of the time, when I am working, I am working for the Lord. And I am offering by the fruits of my action to the Lord. Morning, I offer one flower, and whole day I am offering my work. So I am offering, is going on. It's going on. It's an unending process. 
it is all worship no work is all worship converting work into worship just by change of attitude of mind that is karma yoga so this karma yoga can be done in two ways there either as a gyani if you think you are vedantic then also the whole work there is nothing sacred nothing secular only sacred because it is the one reality one infinite reality trying to express express itself through the various phenomena now if you think if you are a devotee then think that every word is lost word that is how arjuna was told by sri krishna to convert work into and if the work of a of a of a fighter can be convert convert into worship can the work of a an office can be not convert into worship much more easily that's why swami vivekananda wrote a beautiful book karma yoga in karma yoga he gives example there's a beautiful story one yogi was sitting under the tree suddenly he found some leaves on his head so he looked up as soon as he looked up in anger some ray of light rained from his eyes to the birds and the birds instantly fell down got one and fell down and died and this yogi became very happy oh i have developed so much yogic power just by looking with anger towards somebody the bird the bird get what he became very happy after some time it was noon time so he had to go to the village nearby village for bhiksha he used to eat so then he went to a particular place and for bhiksha he he stood for some time a voice came from inside why voice of a lady came from inside sadhu baba please wait for some time i will come and give you bhiksha and this yogi started fuming and threatening what the lady has got so much of as as so much of audacity to tell me to wait she doesn't know what is my power he is thinking like this and another voice came sadhu baba don't think too of you too much of yourself this is not a bird that will get burnt by just by looking the incident happened so somewhere they are in the forest and this lady is come to know about this is and this morning i have not told anybody how she came to know as soon as she came with the bhiksha then she folded we folded and she asked please tell me how did you come to know about this how did you get this yogic power of seeing the thing that is it happened in the forest how did you come to know what are the practices you have performed then the, the house household lady said i don't know about any yogic practices and i have never practiced any yoga these powers have come automatically huh you must have done something but the extraordinary power of what is happening in that you came to know you must have done something i have not done anything extra but yes one thing is that i am a householder i am trying to do my work perfectly well i am a wife i try to do my best possible service to the my husband i try to serve my children i to serve i try to serve my mother in law and father in law when i was at home i used to serve my parents i used to serve my brother and sister and each and every work i take as loss work this all that i have practiced with that these powers have come automatically but if you want to know more about spirituality you should go to a nearby village there is a butcher vyadha he will teach you more lessons this yogi said what i to go to butcher to get knowledge but somehow or the other uh, already his ego was calmed a little so he said okay let me try he went to that village as soon as he was entering the village he saw there was a very fat ugly looking butcher vyada sitting on his shop and and cutting the meat my god horrible i have to take knowledge from this butcher the worst possible work he is doing and then he said no 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 and then he was returning and the butcher said hey sadhu baba where are you going come 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 that lady has sent you from there huh how did he come to no mobile at the time you know there was no mobile we got mobile he has come to know what is this 
what is happening? Then he came. He said, Sadhu Baba, please wait for some time. I will close the shop, then we will go together. Took him to his house, then served his parents, then gave him food. After that, now ask any question. Then this yogi asked many questions. This Koshik Muni asked many questions. And so beautiful replies given. Very intricate spiritual questions asked by Koshik Muni. All were replied beautifully, brilliantly by that Ucha, Vyada. And they all part, part of the Mahabharata. And the name of the whole chapter is Vyada Gita. The Gita that is not told by not Sri Krishna, by Vyada. So much of knowledge is there in that last question. Koshik Muni asked, last question. You are having so much of knowledge. Why are you doing this inferior work of a butcher? Then the Vyada said, my dear boy, no work is inferior, no work is superior. Each and every work is sacred. Work is neither inferior nor superior. How you do the work makes it inferior or superior. Each and every work is sacred and can lead you to God. Even a butcher's work can lead you to God, provided you take it in the right spirit of worship. So, the worst possible work has been shown. One is the work of a fighter in the Bhagavad Gita, and in Mahabharata, this another story. The worst possible work is that of, because we get we get doubts. Yes, the work of a of a worshipper who is doing worship in the temple can be converted to worship, but office work, so dirty work, office work, paper work, plant work. This can be converted to worship. That is why to solve our doubts, the worst possible work is that of a butcher. Even that can be converted to worship. Go to top of your office work. Yes, that can be done. That can be converted to worship. Only you have to change the attitude of mind. I am doing work for the Lord. And it is the same Lord I am trying to worship. The Lord present in every human being I am trying to worship. Once the change of attitude comes, the whole thing is gone. So I have given only a periphery, just I have given a sort of a, a very brief outline of how work can be conducted to worship. So let us try to practice it. Preferably we should try to combine all the four yogas with prominence of Karu Yoga. The Raj Yoga is meditation. Both morning and evening we should meditate for some time. Then Bhakti Yoga is prayer. Let us try to pray a little morning and evening. And then also Jnana Yoga. Let us try to read some holy books. Gita, Mahabharat, Ramayana, Bible. Whatever gives you spiritual knowledge. Try to read those books morning and evening. That is Jnana Yoga. And then Real thing is karma yoga. But karma yoga and karma bhoga don't confuse the two. Right? So one of our Swamis used to ask me, are you doing karma bhoga or karma yoga? Mm-hmm. Most of the time we are doing karma bhoga. What is karma bhoga? Whatever work we do, we will have to get the result. If you do a good work, you will get good result. If you do bad work, you will get bad result. Both are going, going to bind us. They will not give us mukti. It will become karma yoga only if we change the attitude of mind. If we, if we are selfish, if we are working only for ourselves, and if we are working with the idea only of enjoying the fruits of work only ourselves, then it will become karma yoga. But if the change of attitude of mind is there, no, I am doing for the others. And I am doing with a particular purpose of dedicating it to the Lord. Then the work will become worship. The same work. You don't have to do any extra. You don't have to change your work. You don't have to change your profession. You do whatever work we are doing. Each and every work can be converted to worship. Irrespective of where you are, what position you are commanding, what designation you are having, every work can be converted to worship. This is the message that we get from Vedanta, the message we get from Bhagavad Gita, the message we get from the other religions. This is the message for the whole world. The modern world, Swami Vivekan has given a beautiful manner, condensed form, all the letters that were scattered throughout the history in so many pages, in so many scriptures, 
he has beautifully put it in the modern men's language in a very simple form he has put the gist of the whole thing and has told us how this world can be converted to worship how we can get develop sq without doing anything extra whatever work you are doing we should continue to do by that only we will develop sq by that we will get infinite knowledge infinite happiness infinite bliss plus whatever tad you are getting you will get it you are not that is not going to be stopped this is extra what you are going to get infinite knowledge infinite bliss infinite happiness that is a change of attitude of mind so i am very happy to talk to you have um, i invite you all please come to ramkrishna mission swami vivekananda started ramkrishna mission in 1897 we have 167 branches all over the world 40 abroad 127 in india out of which four are in gujarat rajkot limbi porbandar and now the latest one has been started in baroda why in baroda because in baroda there is the historical bilal and bungalow just opposite circuit house vinaya railway station arsidat road rukapuri where swami vivekananda himself stayed in 1892 as a guest of the dean divan muni bhai jashwai and that's why we were requesting the government to hand over this bungalow to us so that we can convert into a beautiful memorial a befitting memorial so on 18th april 2005 We got this bungalow on 30th street that want to be taken rent from the government to Gujarat. The bungalow is in very bad shape, old, very old, dilapidated condition. So we are trying to repair it and try to restore it to the pristine glory when Swami is killed. At that time, how it looked, we want to come it back to that. And then we have already put some started some exhibition further. It will be improved. Then we already started a public library, a meditation hall, prayer hall. We have mobile medical unit. We have value education programs for students, teachers. So many activities have been started. The information brought here will give you all the details, and also we have brought out so many books on value education. Some books have come here afterwards. You can have a look at it. You can purchase it also. But better you come there. We have a very book search section. In fact, Dr. Kalam came on Thursday. He was so happy. The original program was not here. Coming to our ashram, but I had a uh, previous uh, lot of interaction with him. Ten, nine times I had met him in various places. And when I was in Port Bandar, in charge of Port Bandar, he came twice. Once before became president, one after became president of India. And he addressed five thousand youths on 12 January two thousand six. That was a very big function. So when he came to know that Port Bandar also Swami Vivekananda stayed in the same bungalow. he came there and he meditated and he was lost in meditation so when when he when i came to about his plan of program of coming to baroda i wrote to him gave an email that swami can stay in baroda also so he must visit us so though it was not in original program he made it a point to visit our ashram and he was to spend five minutes original planning but he spent half an hour he was so happy he went to our books and section and uh, he he almost uh, that was the first day where uh, the, we have uh, started the bookshop on that particular location we had shifted it and he was the first to enter that new location and then um, he went to the library and we had a lot of discussions with us so so many people from all india and abroad are now coming to visit this memorial so you must also visit you are in baroda please do visit at your convenience the best possible time are 9 to 12 and 4 to 7 when we all library exhibition office are open 12 to 3:30 it is closed uh, books section also is the same timing meditation hall prayer hall office all same timing sunday also it is open every sunday we have discourses morning and evening get also you can come you can become member of the library so all the details are given to you you are all welcome just now our annual celebration is going on because 18th april we received the bungalow so from 14th april to 25th april we have a lot of celebration so the celebration is going on from there i have just spent some time to come to you uh today also at 7:30 there is a beautiful program public meeting when the monks of ramkrishna order will be speaking on what is the uniqueness of ramkrishna order they will be speaking and then tomorrow there is bhajan sandhya and day after tomorrow there is be lila gaan ramkrishna lila gaan so these three days are left we had very good programs earlier every day the programs are 7:30 to 9 every day the evening aarti is 7 o'clock as soon as the evening aarti is over we start with our programs so even today you are all welcome most welcome the invitation card gives you all the details 
So afterwards you can have a look at it, mm, uh, look at the publications and uh, with, it, with uh, my invitation to all of you to visit the center, I pray to the Lord so that we get the power and capacity to convert work into worship and make our human life more meaningful, more purposeful. Thank you. You can ask question English, Hindi, Gujarati, Bengali, Marathi, whatever language you want. Circumstances trying to press it down. Life is nothing but the unfold, unfoldment of a unfoldment of a being under the circumstances trying to press it down. We are always under struggle. You are talking about this struggle against basic needs. Some other person has got some other struggle of mental problems. Some other has got some other problem. Everybody is struggling. Everybody has some problem. Life needs problem. A war is going on. So war between war with poverty, war with mental problem, war with family problem, war at the plant level, there is you know clash of ego between the boss and the subordinate and between the colleagues. It's all going on. War is always going on. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It may be less in the, some company like yours, it may be more in other company, but it is there. But it is there. So this is nothing but a war or a strife is going on. During the strike, if your mind is balanced, you will be able to eat, you will be able to take a little better. Samastha bhav and your mind is calm. So that is why Swami Vivekan says, beautifully he says, the calmer we are, the less disturbed our nerves, the more shall we love and the better will our work be. The calmer we are, the less disturbed our nerves, the more shall we love and the better will our work be. So this tranquility of mind is very important. When the managing director of PGK International had come to India, he was interviewed by Economic Times. He said, why you come to India? He said, we respect India very much because we are following the same. And this has come from Buddha. And Buddha we worship. And Buddha was born in India. So India is a land of pilgrimage for us. And its land gives us at 
sense of tranquility of mind and that gives me more capacity of working. So I believe in Zen has come from the word Chan and Chan has come from the word Dhyan. Dhyan. Dhyan, meditation gives you that tranquility. That gives you balancing. So I am able to balance my emotions. I am able to control my emotions. That means in a one word I am able to get better EQ and better SQ by practice of yoga, meditation, equanimity of mind. So by practicing this Karma Yoga, you will be able to perform much better. So, and when you perform much better, automatically you will get more salary or more jump in salary or better uh, rewards. At the same time, you get more tranquility. At the same time, you get perfection in you get perfection in life. So perfection in work will lead you to perfection in life. So it is a double advantage that you get. So those who are fighting against poverty or who are fighting against the odds or essential needs, even they also, because here there is no investment of time. I am not telling that for converting work into worship, you must devote two hours extra. No. Whatever work you are doing for earning your livelihood, same work you have to do, only change the attitude of mind. That's all. Had I told you that no, see, out of six hours, three hours you do work for your essential needs and three hours you reserve for converting work into worship, then what you said is, will remain valid. But I am not telling you, I am not telling you to give even one minute. For basic needs, after all, you can work eight hours, you do what it does, you do twelve hours, who says no? Do twelve hours, but each and every work, even it converts into worship, what will happen? You will get much better performance. Much better performance, much better result. Much better result, much better salary. Even for getting better salary, you should come to Karmi Yoga. Yes, that is yeah, yeah. Now the thing is this this faculty of discrimination between what will be beneficial for me for a long period of time and what will be beneficial for me in the temporary period. Shreya and prayer. These are the two things. Prayer is pleasant. Shreya is good, beneficial. These two things normally are not same. Prayer. This, I want to have a cup of wine. It gives me intoxication. It is good for me. Pleasant. Very pleasant. But result is, I lose my balance and I beat my wife. And then I go to jail or I commit murder under the effect of the liquor. So, the result is bad. So, this faculty of discrimination will tell you, even if you like to drink that liquor, even if it gives you intoxication, even if it is giving you a kick for the time being, don't drink it. Even if by taking the drug you get a kick and gives you pleasure, don't do it. Because once you become a drug addict, you will get this one. Don't take good cup. It gives you a kick, but you will have a cancer of the mouth. This is power of faculty of discrimination. That is, will tell us what is immediate good and what is ultimate good. This is called Vivek Buddhi, the power of faculty of discrimination. Yes, it is still better, still more. That is, if you want, really want to know the difference, this, this, some, some absolute definition, because good and bad is all relative terms. According to it, it changes according to society, according to the world, according to circumstances. In a particular situation, one particular work will be beneficial, in another situation, that work will not be commendable. But is there, can there be some standard definition? So there he says, whatever is selfish is immoral, whatever is unselfish is moral. 
वॉट एवर इज सेल्फिश इज बैड वॉट एवर अनसेल्फिश इज गुड सो अनसेल्फिशनेस इज अ टेस्ट ऑफ रिलीजन अनसेल्फिशनेस इज अ टेस्ट ऑफ रिलीजन बिकॉज वेन इन यू पुट द वर्ल्ड गॉड अगेन समी सर आई विल नॉट बिलीव इन गॉड एंड गॉड देन आई सर आई बिलीव इन दिस गॉड ऑफ दाइट यूंगर सो ही गिव द वर्ल्ड अनसेल्फिशनेस दिस मच वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज अनसेल्फिशनेस वॉट इज सेल्फिशनेस श्री राम के तक एग्जाम्पल देर इज ब्यूटिफुल मैंगो The season is not started. Already 200 rupees, you get a very good mango, but very costly. But here somehow somebody gifted a very good mango. They have brought it from a long distance. You get a mango. What do you do? Oh, beautiful mango! After a few days, I have got it, and it will not be available for few more days because the season is still away. What to do? Just go to the room, close doors and windows, and take the whole mango. That is one way of doing it. Second, oh my God! In this season, the mango is not available. It has come. All my friends, let us have share. Let us share. That joy that you get by sharing, that is unselfishness. That is the joy of unselfishness. So, that unselfishness joy is the real joy. That selfish joy is also a joy, but it will not lead you to that. evolution of your spirit this will give you evolve your spirit because you are sharing with others so you are becoming one with others there is almost like serving others and that will comes karma yoga and that becomes karma yoga and if you do everything selfishly you will have to bear the fruits of that baad mein pet mein dard hoga akele khane se aur saath mein khane se dard nahi hoga ये जितने लोग हैं जितने बड़े बड़े सेठ साहूकार लोग क्यों इतना हॉस्पिटल में जाते हैं <laughs> ये है लॉ ऑफ कर्मा वेरी सिंपल लॉ ऑफ कर्मा स्टेट एज यू सॉफ सो यू रीड जैसा करोगे ऐसा ऐसा मिलेगा मिलेगा जैसी करनी वैसी भरती एज यू सॉ सो यू रीड आम का पेड़ बोगे आम मिलेगा और इमली का पेड़ बोगे इमली मिलेगी स्ट्रेट एंड सिंपल अच्छा काम करो अच्छा फल मिले क्यों ऐसा है बिकॉज इट इज होलिस्टिक यूनिवर्स इफ यू आर द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ ए कंपनी इफ यू एक्सप्लाइटेड यूर वर्कर्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ यूर एक्सप्लाइटिंग ऑफ द वर्कर्स द वर्कर देयर ही इज नॉट गेटिंग प्रॉपर फूड दैट इज वाई एंड ही इज नॉट हैविंग एनी शेल्टर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दूर एक्सप्लाइटेशन ही इज स्लीपिंग देयर ऑन द फुटपाथ विदाउट फूड and by that side you are sleeping there on the seventh floor of a very multi story building beautiful building that you have constructed by exploiting this money from him and you are sleeping on the seventh floor and you are in gallo pillo with any number of regulars you cannot get sleep till that person gets sleep by getting wet food till he doesn't get the food you cannot get the sleep this is law karma simple it because it is a holistic universe if you exploited that worker you will not get sleep This is why people are suffering. They are ha- they are not having happiness. They are having money, but they are not having happiness. Why? Because conscience is biting them. Conscious mind may not be available, but the unconscious mind is there all the time. And then the law of karma is supreme. Ultimately, you some some many many students they ask me when I go to schools colleges, "Ka, apka kya karm ka vidhan hai, bhai?" हमारे पिताजी इतने ऑनेस्ट हैं वो मोटरसाइकिल चला रहे हैं उनके कली वो सब लेते हैं पैसा टेबल के नीचे से वो मोटर गाड़ी चला रहे कहाँ है काम का सीधा बोलो वेट 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 पांच साल बाद होती है जेल में होगा थोड़ा टाइम रखो दे लॉक इट टेक्स टाइम टू गेट द रिजल्ट नंबर वन सेकेंड केवल पैसा बढ़ने से मन में सुख शांति आएगी कुछ जरूर नहीं ही मे बी गेटिंग मोर मनी बट इज ही हैप्पी देखो उसको पूछो उसका लड़का टारगेटेड बन गया His son has become dedicated. Ladki wapas aa gayi sasural se. Pucho usko. Wo to humko aa kar ke sab consult kar counseling kar ke aate hai isliye humko sab pata hai. Bahar se sab dikhte hai bahut acche hai bahut sukhi hai. Koi sukhi nahi hamare paas sab aa kar ke apna apna bol ke jaate jaate hai. We know how much they are suffering. Manit people are suffering much more than poor people. This we know. That is why law of karma is supreme. ठीक है हाँ बोलो डॉक्टर 
Yes, very, very good questions. Yes, very practical questions. I want these types of the questions. Yes, very good. Now, these are the things. If you do work with perfection, perfection will lead to perfection. Okay? In trying to become perfect, we have to undergo stress. More importantly, what happens? You are trying to make the work perfect, but when it is a teamwork, other people are getting in reverse direction. So, there is a heart burning, then you have to come in conflict with them. Conflict, conflict with them, that will also give you stress. And when you try to do a particular work, it will get elongated, the time will be more, the energy demand will be more, time we consume will be more, that also will irritate some people, both at the family level or the factory level. So all these things are there. What is the solution? Solution I am giving you, write down. It will remove all tension, it will remove all anger. If you are getting too much angry, if you are getting too much reactive, if you are getting too much tense, then this is the one particular formula that will remove all your tension. I have given this formula in my book, Happiness and Peace in Everyday Life. And your question also I have discussed. The beautiful book based on my talk at AMA and Happiness and Peace in Everyday Life. And there is a CD also on managing stress. So there also I have given this formula. I have explained this formula in detail. Do your best and leave the rest. Do your best, leave the rest. You have done your job. Now forget about it. I have tried my best. Under the circumstances I will try to do my best. You cannot do 100%. Whatever you can do, you do under the circumstances. Then leave it at it. Then accept. Try to do with perfection. Expect the maximum. Be prepared for the worst. Try to get the maximum and the best and be prepared for the worst. That's all. Accept it wholeheartedly and in the sportsman spirit. Be prepared for it. Okay? Do your best. Give the rest. Little remove your touch. Okay? Thank you very much.